Hello everyone, my name is Saksham Dekshit and this is my channel Pentest Diaries. Today I'll make another video on the same series of lazy programming series and this is also one of the longest video itself I will shoot and uh, in this video itself we have almost a content almost for 9 pages. So many things I'll try to cover in this video itself. I'll start with a super keyword itself to we get utilized in classes then i'll go to the another section which i call it as a diamond shape problem in multiple inheritance in python then i'll go to the next section that is a dunder method in python then i'll go to the next section that's called it as a abstract base class and um, how we can utilize that that's we try to get it covered then i'll go to the next section that is a setters and the property uh, decorator i'll try to get it cover and then after that the last portion is a object introspection okay so these are the things i'll try to get it cover everything i'll try to make you understand about it don't worry about it even if anything is not appropriate you are not find appropriate content to be get it delivered please let me know in the comment section of this video i'll try to make the video once again but from my side i'll try my best the content which i have delivering uh, the content in, in the context of the theory part in in the context of that code in the context of the output i'll try to make you understand in each and every point of view itself okay i have as per like whatever the content i've delivered yet i have want like instead of reading the content i'll just want you to understand with the small small stuffs like what exactly we're looking for it with this keyword itself this functionality what actually we're looking for in the python itself that's the main stuff which uh intention i have it in my mind itself when i'm delivering the stuff okay so going further with that if we're talking about the super keyword why we require the super keyword in a class itself and what's the need of it so in our <coughs> in our previous lecture we have uh, seen in couple of places uh, what exactly is happening like um, when we going to a subclass itself and we are searching for any method then that method if is present over there itself that's having a highest priority in couple of cases we are also overriding the methods present in our super class also so from the subclass whatever the method we have it if the same method we have it in super class the content which we are delivering in case of uh, subclass it get it reflected in the super class so it means it's override the content present in the super class also that's a functionality which we have discussed in our last lecture now we'll be talking about the super what's the functionality of it to overcome that thing like things are not to overcome like if we are thinking about like if we want to get it print the same method which is present in super class we wanted that method to be get it reflected to be get it print the value from the subclass like we are defining the super keyword over there itself and we wanted the content to be get it reflected from the super class then in that case super keyword we are using it over there itself that's only the functionality of the super keyword okay i'll read the content for you so that you can able to understand very well so certainly super um, super in python it's used to access method and properties from a parent classes it's particularly useful in situations where you are extending a class subclassing and want to invoke the methods or properties of the parent class itself so like you just wanted that to be get it done and uh, try to reflect the value which the same method with whatever the content we are reflecting over there itself we wanted that to be get it pull out in a subclass with a super keyword itself and get it print on a screen this code i will try to get it cover when we are seeing the practical section i'll be go to the next section now so if we talking about the next section this is the next section for it which is we call it as a diamond shape problem in multiple inheritance in python what actually it means okay so this thing we have already discussed in our previous lecture also but i'll just try to make you once again understand with the code itself instead of explaining you the content i will make you understand and might be you can recall it if you have attended that lecture so this is a super class okay class a is a super class class b is a subclass class c is a subclass for a uh, super class of a now we have to derive one more class class d which is we are inherited out of class b and class c so class b and class c will be a super class for class d okay if i'll try to get a define a object over here itself d equal to d i'll will try to call this class and in that case d dot method i'll try to run then in that case what exactly the output i'm supposed to get it on my screen i will able to uh, 
print this value this we have discussed earlier also when we try to run that so whatever that um, uh, class we have it as a first like take example these two uh, classes having a equal weightage itself but it's still this class is a first class itself which we have we are just seeing on the screen itself that was the reason when we try to when we try to print the content present in the method um, of the class of b and c itself so definitely b having a highest privilege that was the reason behind it the content present inside of the class b to be get it reflected on the top of the class c so class c are not having a preference over here itself we have the class b preference that is the concept which we have discussed in our previous lecture also and i'm just making it once again for you so the term which we call it as if this is the anyone ask you about it then make sure that you will able to answer it very well in such a way if anyone asking for a multiple inheritance diamond based stuff so then in that case you can able to give it an answer in such a way okay now talking about the dunder method in python what is the dunder method in python so if we talking about the dunder method in python itself so basically this these uh, dunder methods are i can say that short for a double uh, double underscore itself which we have to put it before the method name itself so whatever the method name we are defining it we simply have to put underscore and under, double underscore we are putting it before that the name of it and that method is special method in python that have names uh, surrounded by double underscore on both the sides so it means like you are having a uh, double underscore on both the side of the name itself for example if we are mentioning a uh, method name as int which we call it as a constructor also so before that also we are putting double underscore and after that also we are putting double underscore that's coming under the category of the dunder method okay and um, um if you are using a single uh, double underscore that's coming under the category of the private and if you are using a single then it's coming under the category of the protected which we have already discussed about it so now what it exactly it means these methods are also known as a magic method or a special method thunder method allow classes to define how they interact with a python built in functionality such as arithmetic operations comparison operator operators and built in functions like a len str wrapper etc these are the things so i'm not making a uh, code for this this is just for an introductory thing i just want you to make you understand about it i'm not making any Uh, code for this okay so these are the i can say there are dunder methods which is i'm just uh, trying to list it from my side and which having a functionality also in front of that i'll try to run it um, i'll just try to make you understand with each and every itself okay so if we talking about the first one which is a int then in that case a constructor method called when an object is initiated okay that's first of thing constructor we are aware about it with the solidity also and in python also that is the first method will be initiated when <coughs> once the uh, code is triggered okay now talking about the another one that is a str called by str function and the print to print a string representation of an object okay now talking about the wrapper called by the wrapper function to return a string representation of an object for debugging purpose so similar like that as for that requirement itself you can use it like a get item length get set item delete item these are the things is present over there itself as per the need itself we'll just try to utilize it but all are coming under the category of the dunder method itself and that's a main important thing wherever you are utilizing double underscore before and after um, in the name of the method itself that we call it the dunder method okay now i'm proceeding further to the next section that's a abstract base class okay that's also one of the thing which is most important so in case of abstract method what exactly we are trying to get it achieve okay so i'll try to make you understand with the code like instead of reading the content i'll read the content also for you but i'll just try to make you understand with the code first and then i'll read the content for you so what exactly we are doing it first we have to import this abc this is we are trying to get it import okay <coughs> we're trying to import these two things out of the abc itself now we have to define one of the class which we call it as a parent class over there itself we are just uh, passing a parameter as abc 
that's must now we are defining one of the abstract method over here itself okay that is most important that we have to get a defined abstract method and now another abstract method we are defining it over here itself what is exactly a abstract method so a small definition about it abstract method are the method which we have to use it if we are defining any abstract method instead of any class and in that case itself whatever the subclass so now over here itself these are two subclasses we have it for the parent class so this is a parent class and this is a subclass this is a child class okay over here itself we have defined a shape shape so that was the reason it's coming under the category of the subclass now whatever in a parent class if we're defining an abstract method then in that case definitely the same method we have to use it inside of it same method means account of the same abstract method we have to utilize in subclass also so taking example if we have two uh, abstract method over here itself then both the subtract method will be get it defined over here itself area and the parameter both don't think about this constructor okay i'm just talking about whatever we are defining over there that should be there it might be more than that constructor we can use it but other than that whatever the method we have it inside of that parent class that to be get it copied inside of the subclass also if we are not having this like example if we have removed this then in that case definitely we are getting an error as the requirement of the sub uh, subtract method is like that should be get it used in the subclasses also and whatever the how many subclasses we have it in all the subclasses we have to use the same methods with the name itself account should be same now similar like that for the another subclass also we are defining in the such a in such a way itself and by that way itself it will run it and when we going further with that definitely at the time of explaining the code i will let you understand about it so by this way itself uh, we are defining it so this um, i hope you are able to understand itself let me read the code for you the content for you which i'm sure about it's not bit make you understand but the thing is that like when you are running the code you are able to see the main core stuff which i have mentioned to you that's most important other than this reading the content for it this is just like if anyone asks you about it what exactly the abstract method then in that case you can able to give the answer in front of that person but to make you understand with that with the code it's most important abstract based classes abc um, in python are a way defining abstract interfaces for the classes they provide a blueprint for other classes to follow by specifying a set of methods so the blueprint we have it in the parent class but that to be get it used in the subclasses itself that we call as a child classes and must be implemented by any concrete subclasses abc helps enforce a common interface interface across different implementation making codes more predictable and maintainable in python abc module provides a support for defining abstract based method the abstract decorator this is just a decorator which we have to get a define and is used to mark uh, mark methods within a abc that must be implemented by a concrete subclass if a subclass fail to implement one or more abstract method defined in abc python raise an error so if we are <coughs> if we are fail to define those method inside of the subclasses then definitely when we are running the code we all the time we are getting error so make sure that the blueprint whatever the blueprint we have it in a parent class that should be get it copied to the subclasses itself that's most important now going further with the next section for it a setter and the property decorator this is the second last topic which i want to get it cover after that this is another one okay so going further with that what is a setter and what is a property decorator itself so setter and getter is one of the thing which we are aware about it so in case of property uh, decorator itself i'll make you understand with this itself and then i will uh, make you understand with that okay so what exactly over here itself we are defining one of the class over here itself we are defining one of the property decorator itself then we are defining x dot setter itself so one is a setter one is a property decorator we are defining it now if i'll define the object over here itself and i'll just run this obg dot x equal to 10 so make sure whenever you are trying to pass a value you are providing a value then in that case setter will run okay so even we have the same method inside of both um in, in we have inside of the property decorator also instead of the setter also we have same method but still this will be get a trigger as we are passing the value if we are simply want to print it then in that case this will run 
so this is a differentiation between a property decorator and the setter which i want to make you understand with that it's bit understandable to you like whenever we are passing one value setter will trigger over here itself but if we are simply want to print it then in that case no value will be passed then in that case a getter will be run that's a property decorator okay now going this is also a similar type of thing i'm not explaining you once again it's a similar type of thing okay now going further with that i'll reach to the last point that's a object introspection and i'm not saying that this is the last section itself after that we are going for the code also just to see how exactly we can utilize these concept inside of the code and what type of output we are getting on our screen so in case of object in, uh, introspection what exactly is it and how we utilize in a python so that's most important so object introspection in python refers to the ability to examine the attributes and the method of an object at run time i'll read the content once again the ability to examine the attributes and the method of an object at run time so by this way you can able to understand examine the attributes and the method of an object at run time so that was the purpose of introspection so object introspection is having like by this way we can able to analyze it examine the attribute and the uh, methods of an object at the time of run time itself we can able to get it identify that like examine it now if we talking about it allows the uh, uh, inspect the structure properties behaviors of an object when in your code itself just to get it know about it how exactly this will work so if we talking about this if we are using a dir function then in that case a dir function returns a list of the attributes and the method of an object it provides a comprehensive view of the object's structure itself you can get that whole structure using a dir now talking about the type by this way itself using this function you can get the type of an object itself talking about the is instance itself by this way we can able to get that object instance of a particular class or type like we just have to get it identify whether it's that the instance function check if an object is an instance of a particular class or type or not okay so that's one of the thing we just trying to get it check whether it's present over there like it's we just try to check whether that same on um, the inside of that object whether we have that method present over there or not that's by that way itself we can get it identify using a is in instance itself okay get attr and the hash attr itself so get attr is a function uh, retrieve the value of the attribute of an object by name so by the name itself you can retrieve that of the attribute value by taking of hash attr the hash attr function checks if an object has a particular attribute or not so that's attribute is present over there or not that to be get it checked by the hash attr now talking about the set attr so by the set attr we just want to set the value of an attribute of an object by the name that we can do it over here itself okay so this is all about the content which i just want to get it deliver now i wanted you to i just make you understand with the code which i have already prepared it there i think near around 5 i think 6 code we have it for this i think is similar like that for the last one but i am um, i'm damn sure about it after seeing the code you can able to understand and this make you understand with all the concepts behind it okay and i'll give you little bit idea at the end of it i know lot of things i'll try to get it cover in this video itself but i do not want to get it stretch a lot of things like make it single single video for single concept it's far better i'll just try to club multiple things as you know multiple things of the class so it's bit easy for me just to make you understand with a Uh, small small uh, stuff over there itself instead of the going with a full flesh new concept we are not going anything as a full flesh concept i try to get explain you as we understand most of the stuffs now i'll just go to the enhancement phase where i'll just try to make you understand in different different sections of the class itself what are the different different type of functions we are utilizing inside of it and the functionality of it now going further with that okay so now if we talk about the first which we have discuss about the one let me go to the top of it that we call it as a super itself so in this case itself as i told you about it setter we are utilizing it just to get that output 
from the super class method if we having a same method inside of the subclass and the super class in that case itself the content to be get reflected the super class we have to use a super keyword inside the subclass by that way you can able to get the content so over here itself this is a super class which we have it i am not explaining everything about it you know this syntax very well i'll just go to that section which i wanted to be get it explain you okay this is the another class over here itself we have two methods over here itself one method is like this a constructor one and another method we have it is a greet so greet you can see both the uh, both the classes having a same greet method and this is a subclass and this is a sub uh, super class itself which is called as a parent and this is a child now if i'll define it a uh, object over here itself and at the time i'm trying to pass two values alice and the uh, age as 10 itself so it get it go to the child and it will get it copy and mention it as a 10 and the name is over there itself okay but as it's going over here itself super dot then in that case it will go and get it define as self dot name equal to if this this line is not present over here itself it's definitely be get it uh, get it inside of the subclass only but if we are defining super dot over itself the main reason is we wanted that value to be get it copied the name value to be get it copied to the super class and we are going to the constructor of uh, super class itself and the name value to be get it copied over here itself now if i'll go to the next section child dot greet then in that case i'll go for once again itself over here itself and once i reach over here i will run this super dot greet this is a statement i'm writing over here itself so it will call the greet function of the super class then in that case whatever the content we have it inside of a hello now whatever the value the name i have already transferred it that's ls so we get the output as uh, <coughs> hello and then after that we are now uh, we are getting that output as comma then we have to put that ls so we are getting uh, output as hello uh, uh, comma then ls now uh, once we run with that then after that this line also be get it printed on a screen so it's nothing like that this will go to the super class and not returning back once that value to be get it printed it return it back to the subclass once again method and then the next command our next statement will be get it printed so if i'll run this code you can able to see this this is will be get it printed first and then after that this line will get it printed once we have completed the uh, statement which is present inside of the super class now going to the next section this one so any guesses what exactly we're trying to get it achieve i've already explained you about the diamond one so i'll make you once again understand like this is a super class this is subclass of the super class a now this is the class get it derived with the uh, class b and class c itself this uh, for this subclass we have two su subclass it's um, two super class itself we have it so if i'll try to make the object over here itself and try to get it run this what exactly is happening in that case itself this this super class will having a preference on the top of the c class so whenever we are running this then definitely the value present um, in the method of the class b that to be get it printed on the instead of class c okay that's having a highest preference than the class c okay if i'll run this you can able to see on your screen this will be get it printed okay this is clear i have even explained you at the time of the theory also now going to the next section what exactly is this <coughs> so we are talking about the abstract method so as we discuss about it abstract method uh, yeah <laughs> i thought i have missed it so we have to import it now these are the two abstract method which we are defining inside of the super class now these are the two subclasses where we are using a blueprint of the super class itself that was the reason we are defining both the methods over here itself and both the methods in another class also as both the classes are working as a subclass for the shape class okay now when i'm trying to get it defined both the objects over here itself trying to get it past the value 5 and the 4 to be get it done when i try to print the output in both the cases itself then in that case i will get the output so it's a simpler way like i'm not uh, make you understand with that like you will able to see like when i'm trying to pass these values and try to call this so circle dot area then in that case what exactly is happening this will go to circle dot area so this will go to the circle dot area then over here itself whatever the value we have it we have already transferred it and that to be get it reflected so 
we have already passed the value 5 that to be get it into and we get the results and that get it reflected back it's similar in all the cases we have done and we get the final result as like this okay so i hope you are able to understand this now going to the next section i'm talking about the setter method setter and the property decorator so setter and the property decorator what exactly we'll trying to get it achieve in this case it's as i mentioned you like whenever we try to pass the value then in that case the value to be going to the setter but if we want that a method to be get it printed then in that case definitely it will go to the getter so over here itself um, when we are defining the object like this is the this is a syntax for it we are defining the class then we are defining the constructor now this is a property decorator where we are defining one uh, method as x and another method also as x itself but we call it as underscore x dot setter so this is a setter this is a getter itself when i try to run this passing a value as 10 then in that case it's going to this section if i'll try to uh, print of obj dot x that is object dot x then i'll just try to go for this method as it's I'll, i just simply want to print the value of the getter so i'm not supposed to go to the setter i'll go to the getter okay that's clear i'll run this and you can able to see i'll get the result as 10 okay this is clear okay so this is also the same setter and getter only so i'm not making you once again running the if i'll run this code you can able to see i can get the result as 10 okay i provided the code in my documentation also you can get that now we coming to the last section that is most important where we are talking about a lot of things related to object introspection so over here itself each and every section having a different type of output okay let me run the code and then i'll explain you each and every section about it okay so if i'll run with this i'll define this is a class this is one of the constructor which we have defined it now after that i'll define one of the like i have put it each and everything over here itself do don't consider this is a complete one code okay all the snippet i put it in one Uh, one file itself so this is nothing like a continuation of a code itself the code will be get it done over here itself like over here itself the first portion of the dir is completed now the next portion now the next portion so all that snippet have put it in one line uh, in one file itself that was the reason you are seeing unstructured like a class is also coming over here itself over here itself so that was the thing okay don't be confused i have put it all the snippet in one file only that was the reason you are seeing multiple things at the same time okay so in your case if you want to run it separately you can do that but i do not want to increase the count of the file that was the reason i have put it all the snippet in one file itself just to get you understand so when we run this first one then in that case we just simply want to get the all the list of it over there itself like whatever that uh, we can say whatever the directory returns a list of the attributes and the methods present over there itself we get the list over here itself now talking about the next section uh, object we are defining as a 10 if i try to run this one so if i try to identify like what type what type of object is it then in that case the object type will be get it defined as an integer as the value is integer over here itself okay if i talk about the object is 10 if i try to get and understand whether uh, int is present over there itself or not the, whether it's a integer or not to get it understand we get the result as true itself yeah that's a integer value that was the reason we get that uh, result as true now talking about the next section where we just trying to get it pass which we talking about as a get getter okay so over here itself i'll try to get it define the object then i'll try to get it pass this and i'll just try to see whether it's over there or not so if i'll just try to run it and then after that i will try to get it print that value and then printing the value we get the output as 10 itself so that you can you are able to see like we are getting the output as 10 as i'll try to print the value of x itself whatever the x value we have it we are printing that value is straight forward now going to the next section where we just wanted to check whether it's over there or not so we wanted to check whether x whether we have the x attribute over there inside of that uh, constructor or not like other in method or constructor whether we have that x attribute be there or not so once we run this code we can able to see yeah x is present over there itself that was the reason we are get the output as true you can see it's true true and now for the last section we are we just trying to get it pass the value and then we try to get it print that okay so we are overriding the value we are just trying to get it pass this and then after that when we try to run it the final value of the y itself is 20 over here itself okay so that's it 
that's it all about the stuff which is want to get it covered in this video itself i hope you're able to understand the whole video it's not at all be possible to grasp everything in one uh, in one shot viewing this video itself so go through the whole lecture once again um, reading the content which i have provided this make you understand well about it okay don't worry about it i will not uh, um, be running with that itself like I want to cover the stuff as the base is already built and I do not want to spend the time just to explain you <coughs> the stuff related to the class again and again I wanted the concept to be clear to you instead of just define the same thing make you understand again and again itself okay so as you already reached to I am assuming it all you already reached from the beginners level to the intermediate level so there is nothing like if I am not explaining you the same syntax again and again okay so I am assuming it you are able to understand the syntax very well that was the reason I am going to the intermediate immediate level now so i hope you're able to understand this video itself if you have any um, doubt you will definitely have to put the comment in the comment section of this video you can provide your feedback if you feel like anything is not appropriate i'll definitely try to improve that in a next lecture and um, definitely once i'll just try to complete this whole series of the lazy programming series this will go almost a longer time itself i'll try my best to get it complete once we're done with that we'll definitely go for the another c which is quite interesting even i'm eager about to present that content so definitely wait for a time once we complete this lazy programming series and we'll go for the next section for it so thank you so much once again take care bye bye